What if I told you that there was a simple at-home test that you could do to understand your fertility on a level that you never thought was possible? What if I told you that doctors don't order this test normally? It's one that I order in almost all of my fully functional programs. It comes standard because the information that you get in this test is irreplaceable. Today, we're going to talk about one woman's Dutch test results. The Dutch test is a dried urine test for comprehensive hormones. That's the acronym. It's nothing to do with your Dutch heritage. The Dutch test is something that I use in my practice, and we are going to go through one woman's results to review them and show what information we gathered that changed her fertility forever. Hello and welcome to another episode of 5 Minute Fertility here on Functional Fertility TV. My name is Olivia and I am a functional fertility dietitian and founder of Let's Get Real RD where I help couples everywhere get real answers in order to get real pregnant. On today's 5 Minute Fertility episode, I will warn you, it's a little more than 5 minutes. However, I didn't want to cut this one short because this test analysis deserves the time and attention that I'm going to give it today. So the Dutch test is an advanced hormone test that I do on every single one of my clients of fully functional. And I wanted to show you one case of a real woman's results to really understand what they mean and how they changed her fertility story. And so it's super powerful. I didn't want to leave out any information and I know you're going to enjoy it. We are looking at a Dutch cycle mapping result. So Dutch cycle mapping is part of the Dutch Complete Plus, which is what I recommend in my fully functional program. You get the cycle mapping, which is where we actually map out through one entire month on a few collections throughout the month what your hormones are doing, what your main reproductive hormones are doing. That's estrogen and progesterone. So here on the Dutch cycle mapping, the top box is for estrogens and the bottom is progesterones. What we actually see here is how robust of a cycle a woman has and also if she released a follicle during that cycle or not and if her days and the time, her luteal phase, her follicular phase, if that is all working in the appropriate timing. So here in the top box we see that her estrogens are pretty darn good. They're, she ovulates around day 14 which would be good to know for trying to conceive and then her estrogens come down which they are supposed to do as shown between those black lines. Now the bottom box, this is her progesterone. Progesterone should peak about five to seven days after estrogen. And she did have that peak. What we see here is a couple things. Number one, she has a longer cycle. You can see here that she actually collected up until about day 34. This is what we call a luteal phase defect. I mean, the luteal phase is a little bit longer than maybe it should be. This could indicate that she may actually have difficulty getting a fertilized egg to implant due to higher ongoing hormones, which actually limit the burrowing capacity, if you will, of the egg into the uterine lining. So this was a major finding here. We want to really make sure that your cycles are, that a woman's cycles are the appropriate duration. Too long, too short, that can actually impact fertility. What's more surprising here and a really great finding is the types of progesterone that we see are made. There are two types of progesterone that your body makes. The one in the blue is called an alpha progesterone. This alpha progesterone should actually be made in lesser amounts than the red line, which is the beta progesterone. When we have more of the alpha progesterone, which is this blue box, uh, this blue line, see it really should be in between these two black lines. This actually means that she is creating more of a stress-related progesterone. This is coming from her adrenals, not really her ovaries, which is really what we want to be producing, the right type of progesterone to support implantation. So what we see here is, yes, she's producing progesterone, but she's actually producing a kind that is caused from stress, emotional stress, previous stress, We've actually been talking about this and, and really trying to work with this in her program. But here we see we need to support her, her progesterone levels through proper GI or gut 
support and liver support so she can actually not only produce the right type of progesterone here but also clear it so that it does not impact implantation of that egg so this was an amazing finding from the dutch cycle mapping portion of her test one thing that I want to point out here is that this gave a lot of clarity in this specific woman's case because she, we had already been working on tracking her cycles with fertility awareness method, which is something that I teach all of my clients to do. We had one at least two to three months of this tracking, very simple to do with a basal body thermometer. You take your oral temperature in the morning and you check cervical fluid changes throughout the month. It takes but a couple seconds a day. You get incredible in the moment feedback about your cycle. It was a little frustrating for her, her because her cycles, her charting was spot on. She knew when she was ovulating. She was in tune with her body. She had the proper thermal shift, which is what we check for on fertility awareness method and what I address and I assess in all of my clients' cases. And so her charts looked good which, you know, she's not alone. Many women come to me and their charts look good. And so we would think that it would happen, right? We would think that we're timing sex appropriately. We're getting a thermal shift. Why are we not getting pregnant? If that progesterone is made in one, not only the right um, type, but two, hanging around longer than it should, then again, that is going to impact implantation. She very well could be having a fertilized egg in the month. That egg is just not able to be sustained in that endometrial environment in order to become a pregnant, in order for her to become pregnant or to see that on a positive pregnancy test or for her cycle, her next period to not happen a little bit technical and where you really need someone a practitioner who's trained to interpret these results appropriately and get you the best answers what we see here is a hormone testing summary from the dutch complete portion of her testing if you were to glance at this and if you have ever seen the dutch test you actually this looks really good um, most things are in green. We see a lot of green. Usually green is good, right? Uh, without going into a lot of detail, things are looking really good. Remember though, even if we look at progesterone right here and where I'm circling, progesterone is high, which if, if I just saw this, I would think that's really good. We need progesterone. But as discussed earlier, she's actually not producing the right type of progesterone. So that's something that we're able to see when we do the Dutch complete. Now, if we were to continue down further, we see a couple of things here. Again, just with progesterone, we're seeing that although she has a good overall amount, she's really shunting it down that 5-alpha pathway when really we need some beta. So we see here what we can be doing to support that pathway. Another thing we see here when we look mm -hmm. further is her androgen levels. Androgens include things like DHEA and testosterone both very important for reproductive fertility. Her DHEA, which actually we saw up here, DHEA looked really good, her total DHEA production. However, what is very important is a type of DHEA called DHEAS. Again, not the right form that we're really needing. Her testosterone is also quite low. Testosterone is very, very important for follicle development and to support fertilization and implantation. So we see here many things to address. Another portion of the Dutch Complete looks at estrogens, right? Really dives into estrogen. It looks really complicated here, but what a trained practitioner would see here is that we really do have a good amount of estrogen. However, all estrogens, once they are used, they need to be removed from the body. This is kind of those arrows here. And down here in the left corner, we see that they aren't really being removed from the body properly through proper genetic pathways. And so we're seeing a pattern that we need to support her specific genetic pathway, pathways, specifically two things called sulfation and methylation. Big terms, but when you know what you're doing with them, they're very easy to support. So we really work to bring in some uh, methylation support, we actually know that she would not do too well on caffeine, so we're limiting caffeine consumption, and we're also supporting 
estrogen detoxification by bringing in certain foods like the brassica family, Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, broccoli, etc. So a lot of major things can be done here through food and proper supplementation. With the DHEA, this was a major finding for her. She actually needs to be working on this pathway. DHEA is very important for natural conception and for IVF. So what we see here, and oh, another page, forgot about this one. The last page of the Dutch test is actually organic acids and neurotransmitter markers. We've been working a lot on this already. So you can see a lot of things are within range for her. Things like B12, B9, um, certain, a lot of B vitamins for fertility. But her melatonin was at the low end of the range. Melatonin is something very important for fertility, for ovary function. It's a major antioxidant that is used within the ovary. So we know how to support her melatonin by wearing even blue light blocking glasses at night, increasing melatonin supporting foods, and even maybe supplementing for a period of time to get that up. And there you have it, an inside look into the advanced hormone testing that I run in my fully functional program at Let's Get Real RD. If you're interested to hear more about my program offerings, you can click the link below to view my website. Uh, the fully functional program is my most comprehensive, all-inclusive program where the Dutch testing is included. And that is the most popular option among women and couples everywhere. If you have questions and want to understand how you can better understand your fertility by using the Dutch test, click the link below to schedule a free discovery call to understand where you be can begin to explain your unexplained infertility or your fertility challenge challenges or just get a leg up in your trying to conceive plans for the future. That's actually what I did when I was looking to start my conception journey. And I'm very, very grateful I did the Dutch test as it taught me many things about my hormones that I would not have known otherwise and maybe ran into some trouble with. So um, the Dutch test is a wonderful piece of information to carry along with you on this journey. I hope you enjoyed and thanks for hanging in there with me for a little longer five minute fertility episode today. I hope you enjoyed and it was worth it.